Good morning, people. Uh, nice Sunday morning, uh, January 24. I'm still getting used to 2021. I'm so used to 2020. Uh, we continue with our online messages. I'll be posting this this Sunday morning. Of course, I'm preaching it before this date, but I'll be posting it January 24, and you can listen to this message online. Uh, keep our church in prayer uh, as we continue to go through the uh, coronavirus and not meeting face to face. We look forward to the day when we will be meeting back face to face again. But until then, we do these online messages. So I'm going to continue again. Last week, at last number of weeks, we have been in the book of Ruth. Last week, we looked at part of chapter two. Uh, this week, we go on into chapter three. You remember last week, Ruth was gleaning in Boaz's field and met Boaz for the first time found out Naomi explained to her about the kinsman redeemer. So we're going to continue on with that. Uh, Boaz promises to redeem Ruth here in our story. But today's humor, we've got some grammar jokes, okay? Some grammar jokes. Did you hear, did you hear about the pregnant woman who started shouting, couldn't, wouldn't, shouldn't, didn't, can't. She was having contractions. Ah, ha, ha, those are contractions. Here's another one. What's the difference between a cat and a comma? Well, one has claws at the end of its paws. Notice the spelling. The other is a pause at the end of a clause. Isn't that interesting how those words are uh, spelled differently, meaning different things, but uh, sound the same. I ask this question, which dinosaur, dinosaur yeah, knows the most words? Well, it is a thesaurus. Ha, ha. All right, let's get into our message for the day. Here's my outline of our text. I take the chapter and I break it all up into its parts and label them. I haven't given it a nifty um, alliterated outline, but I break it up and give the titles for the various paragraphs in the chapter. Point number one, instructions from Naomi. Naomi carefully gives Ruth some instructions. Point number two, Ruth's actions at the threshing floor. Want to talk about those, verses six through eight. Point number three, Boaz promises to redeem Ruth. Talks to her that evening and he promises, Ruth reminds him that he is the kinsman redeemer and he promises that he will redeem Ruth. Ruth returns to Naomi, explains to her everything that happens, and then at the end of our text, Naomi gives advice to Ruth about the whole situation. Okay, verse 18. All right, so let's jump into our story, kind of a love story, but as we have said before, it is a illustration of how Jesus Christ is our kinsman redeemer but we find uh, a story about in the midst of the period of judges that was full of sin and israel wandering from the lord and idol worship we find people with integrity who are still um seeking the lord all right let's jump into this verses one through five instructions from naomi one day ruth's mother-in-law naomi said to her my daughter, I must find a home for you where you will be well provided for. So time has gone on. They've returned to um, Bethlehem. Ruth's husband has been gone for uh, quite a while now. And they, as two widows, are uh, living, getting along because of the kindness of others. But Ruth is quite young yet. And can remarry. And so Naomi is saying, hey, I need to help you uh, find a home. Uh, and she knew the law of the kinsman redeemer. And so she says, I got to do something. Now, Boaz 
with whose women you have worked is a relative of yours. Tonight he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Okay, so was that the, oh, here we are. Wash, put on perfume, and get dressed in your best clothes. Oh, I want you to, to look nice for him. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he is lying, then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. I will do whatever you say, Ruth answered. So I got some comments here. Time has gone by. Naomi felt it was time to get things rolling, it was reminding the kinsman redeemer, you know, that he had to do his responsibility. She told Ruth that Boaz was a kinsman redeemer. We looked at that last week and here again uh, for her husband who had died. She told Ruth to dress pretty and go down to the threshing floor. She was to wait until Boaz lies down, then to go lie at his feet. Okay, so, so I've kind of rehearsed what those verses have said there. Naomi feels it's time things need to get rolling. Ruth said she would do what Naomi told her. Remember, Ruth was a Moabitess wasn't familiar with the customs that went on here in Israel, uh, much of it according to the law. We're going to talk about the barley harvest and the festivals and stuff. Um, so she listened to her mother. She was very um, careful uh, throughout the whole book of Ruth. She was very careful to listen to the advice that Naomi had for her. All right, point number two, Ruth's actions at the threshing floor. Okay, so Naomi had given her these instructions. Verse six, so she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. So she was, she, she didn't know, she just was taking the advice of Naomi. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Notice it's at the far end of the grain pile, somewhat away from the other people. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. In the middle of the night, something startled the man. He turned, and there was a woman lying at his feet. Whoa! So, uh, she did what, what Naomi had told her uh, to do. Kind of strange actions here. Uh, I got some comments here. At the end of the harvest, there was a celebration. They had a feast and they drank wine. Okay, so this was the end of the barley harvest. Uh, I think I got a slide coming up that talks about the, the festivals that they had in the uh, Israelite law. And the Lord had brought in a, apparently a good barley harvest and they were celebrating about it. This would go well into the night, and when it ended, the men would sleep rather than go home, okay? So they had drank quite a bit of wine, and uh, this went well into the night, and rather than wander home, they slept right there at the, at the winnowing floors, at the, at the, where the barley was gathered in. Ruth waited until Boaz went to sleep, and then went and lay at his feet. Okay, uncovered his feet and lay down. He was startled in the middle of the night and rolled over. And, Whoa, someone was at his feet. What's going on here? So kind of interesting what's going on in this story. Kind of, again, strange story, interesting story. Um, he asked who it was. He was startled to find out that it was a female. It was Ruth. Now, he knew Ruth. You remember from the last chapter, she had uh, been gleaning on his on his um, fields, and he told her, "Don't go to other fields, but stay on my fields. Eat here with my working women." And um, but he was startled. What is she doing here? 
the barley harvest feast. Let me talk about that just a little bit here. The first harvest See, the first harvest season, the barley harvest, is the smallest, yet in a significant sense, the greatest of the feasts. This was a feast that was laid out in the law for the Israelites to, to do. If you study their holy days, their holidays, that's where we get our term holidays from. It means holy days. This was given to Israel in the law. Some of them were fasts where they were to repent to the Lord and, and confess their sin. And uh, But this one is a feast. They were to celebrate. They were to have a good time. Uh, isn't that interesting? The Lord built that into their holy days. Generally referred to as the Passover season, it includes the seven days of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This is the first spring harvest and is a lighter one, as the ripened barley is a relatively lighter weighted grain than wheat is. Um, then later on would be the wheat harvest, and there would be a great celebration at the end of that. Within the Passover unleavened bread season, um, a, a wave sheaf offering was given to the Lord, and that's found in Leviticus 23. But again, they had this was the end of the barley harvest, laid out in the law. They were feasting, they were having a great celebration and uh, honoring the Lord because the Lord had given them a barley harvest. And, of course, we've had the story of Ruth sleeping at Boaz's. Point number three, Boaz promises to redeem Ruth here. Okay, so he turns over in the middle of the night and finds a, a lady sleeping at his feet. Who are you, he asked. I am your servant, Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a guardian redeemer. The N, uh, the ESV trans. I've been I've been saying kinsman redeemer. That's how some of the other translations have translated it. The ESV has translated this a guardian redeemer of our family. So Ruth is now got all this information from Naomi, reminding Boaz that he is. The kinsman redeemer kind of gently reminding him, hey, you need to fulfill, here I am, a poor widow, we have land, we have, uh, I'm, I'm a widow, I can, young, can remarry, I need to raise children from my first husband, and it is your responsibility. Um, so, she is reminding him of that. The Lord bless you, my daughter. Notice Boaz's reply. He was he was happy that she reminded him of this. This kindness is greater than that which you showed earlier. You have not run after uh, other men, uh, whether rich or poor. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. All the people of my town know that you are a woman of noble character. Isn't that interesting? She had a reputation. You remember way back when they were returning and Naomi told the two daughter-in-laws, go back to your family. Maybe you'll find a husband there. And Ruth says, no, I'm going to accept your people as my people, but I'm going to accept your God as my God. She was a woman of noble character, and the people of Bethlehem knew it. Boaz says, well, this is, the, this is a great act that you are doing here, Ruth. Although it is true that I am a guardian redeemer of our family, there is another who is more closely related than I. So, you know what, Boaz, I think Boaz had um, researched this out. He said to himself, well, let's look at this. So he had been thinking about being this guardian redeemer, kinsman redeemer, and he had checked it out. There was another relative who was a little closer than he was, and he had to talk with the other um, guardian redeemer about this whole matter because uh, that guy had first rights. 
stay here for the night. And in the morning, if you want to do his duty, and if in the morning, if he wants to do his duty as your guardian redeemer, good, let him redeem you. But if he is not willing, uh, as sure as the Lord lives, I will do it. Lie here until morning. So some comments I've made here. Now, listen to this. Uh, here, uh, it wasn't a, a, what do I want to say? A good situation. Uh, some feel that Ruth and Boaz had premarital relations that night. Nothing in our text indicates that. I have read some Bible commentators who feel that that went on, but I don't think it did. These were very noble and godly people that were involved here. She was just doing what um, Naomi had told her to do. She slept at Boaz's feet. Um, I don't think anything of that kind went on here. Though it was kind of a compromising situation here, a pretty young woman down at the um, threshing floors, uh, the men had been drinking. Uh, later, Boaz tells Ruth to leave early so that no one would see her there. He did not want rumors to start. <laughs> Ruth wants Boaz to cover her with the corner of his garment. That was what she had said, okay? So this was symbolic. Um, she was saying, Boaz, you need to cover me with your protection as my kinsman, guardian, redeemer. So that that uh, statement that she made was was not that she was laying there on the cold ground and wanted to be warm, cover me with your garment. She was reminding Boaz, Boaz, you need to carry this out and cover me with your protection. He informed her that there was a relative who was technically closer than what he was, but he told Ruth he was going to talk with the man and see what the man said. We're going to see that in a, a following sermon as we go on in, in the book of Ruth. But So he promised her. He promised her, don't worry. Um, I will take care of this matter. All right. Point number four. Ruth returns to Naomi, verses 14 through 17. So she lay at his feet until morning, okay? But got up before anyone could be recognized. It was kind of dark yet. Nobody could recognize uh, what was going on there. And remember, Boaz had gone down to the other end of the, the pile of barley grain. Um, and she got up and, and left. And he said, no one must know that a woman came to the threshing floor. Yeah, rumors would fly. It would be inappropriate for that to happen. He said also, bring me the shawl you are wearing and hold it out. When she did so, he poured into it six measures of barley and placed a bundle on her. Then he went back to town. Okay, so here's uh, um, Boaz again being a blessing and helping Ruth, but Ruth is, is being careful. They don't want rumors to fly. A couple more verses here. When Ruth came to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, how did it go, my daughter? She wanted to know. Then she told her everything. Ruth told Naomi everything Boaz had done for her and added, he gave me these six measures of barley saying, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. So that barley sure was going to help them out. Here they had a, a good barley harvest and he's sharing it with these uh, poor widow ladies. But also I think the giving her a barley was symbolic of his willing to protect and care for uh, them. Okay, some comments I have here on these verses. Uh, Boaz did not want anyone to think poorly of them, so he had instructed Ruth to get up early and leave before anyone found out a woman had slept there at, you know, at the, at the barley harvest floor. Having drank a lot the night before, these men weren't getting up very early. You know, they slept in that morning. Ruth did this. But before she left, Boaz gave her a bunch of grain for her and Naomi. 
So Ruth went back to Naomi and told her all that had happened there at the barley floor. So uh, the story continues. Naomi directs, is directing Ruth and Ruth is obeying. And there they have reminded Boaz of his responsibility to do what he was supposed to do. You know, a lot of times we have responsibility, responsibility for our family, responsibility to, to be a good testimony for the Lord. Uh, we need to make sure that we carry out our responsibility. Um, well, let, we see that in this next verse. One more verse to go here. Naomi's advice to Ruth. Naomi said this. Then Naomi said, wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens. Notice this, for the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. Naomi knew of Boaz, knew that he was a godly man, a responsible man, that Boaz would do what his responsibility was. Again, I got some comments. Naomi tells Ruth just to wait and see. Ruth was probably a bit anxious about this. Um, Ruth is, uh, Naomi is trying to calm her down. Um, Ruth, you know, obviously this is a big matter. It's another husband. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, when's he going to take care of this? And But Naomi calms her down. Just wait and see. She knew that Boaz was a very honorable man and would keep his word. Isn't it interesting? Boaz had this reputation. Everyone knew it. Boaz was a very honorable man. His character was known in the town of Bethlehem. You know what? Your character is known by those who know you. Everyone's got a picture of what your character is like. I wonder what they think of your character. Do they see an honorable person? I say here, she knew that Boaz would make sure that the kinsman redeemer part of the Jewish law would be carried out either by the other closer kinsman or by Boaz. Of course, Ruth, she didn't even know who this other guy was. This other guy could easily become her husband. No wonder she was a little bit anxious about what was going on. I think she certainly would have preferred Boaz knowing him uh, over this other guy that she did not know. So she was a bit anxious, but Ruth tells her to calm down and wait and see what happens. Here is a good question. Can others depend on your word? Do others trust you will do what you say that you are going to do? What is your word? What is your character? Okay, here's a cross-reference. Romans 12, 17, repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. Yeah, our lives are in the sight of all. Everybody is watching our lives and they know if we're a cheat, they know if we're a liar, they know if we're lazy, they know if we do not keep our word. Paul reminds the Romans here that they are to do what is honorable in the sight of all. 2 Corinthians 8, 21. For we aim at what is honorable. Yeah, I picked out that word, brought a couple of cross-references. What is honorable, not only in the Lord's sight, but also in the sight of men. Both of these verses Talk about the sight of men. And we see that in the book of Ruth. Everybody knew Boaz's character. And I say it to you. Everybody who knows you knows what your character is like. All right, here's the conclusion of my message. I know, kind of a short message today, but we're covering these verses throughout the book of Ruth. This story seems to be about three honorable people, people with integrity. Uh, there's that word honorable. I want to bring that out. How honorable are you? What is your, uh, here I'm trying to give some examples. Uh, what is your thought life like? Uh, how much can others depend on you to do what you say? 
What are your actions like when no one else is around? These types of things show how honorable you are. Again, Paul tells us to be honorable in the sight of all men. All right, let's close in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this wonderful story about Ruth and Boaz and Naomi. Good people, honorable people who want to do your will. Father, we pray that our lives would have would be honorable in the sight of others because our lives need to be a testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.